very good day to you all. Let me start by welcoming you, especially the new ones among us, to Bahir University Kano, a prestigious center of learning. On this note, I want to congratulate the newly admitted ones for being among the few successful ones that have been admitted. And I hope you will make good use of this opportunity. My name is Hayatuddin Adamu, and I am here to discuss the use of library, an important module among the different causes of GSP. As you will be aware in other courses that you shall be taking under the GSP general programs, you will be taught about the general student skills. Just as the human personality varies, this is how we also have different student skills that apply to different individuals. Meaning that student A might choose to study in a different way. If student B try to apply that same way student A use, it may not naturally apply. Meaning that there are different student skills or study method. Each student is expected to identify the method that best applies to them and make good use of it to achieve their objective. Having understood this, in the course of your study, you are also going to realize that different students use different study methods in order to achieve their objective. However, irrespective of the various study methods used by different students, there is something which is very similar to all of them. That is what is referred to as information resources. An information resource is an information bearing document. Any document that carries any form of information that is useful to you is simply referred to as an information resources. And information resources comes in two categories. While some are in print form, known as the print resources, others are in electronic form, others referred to as electronic information resources. While the print resources are those information resources which you can feel, you can touch, the use of them doesn't necessarily require the use of an electronic device. Examples like the test books you find in the library, arranged on the shelves, the dictionaries, the encyclopedias. The electronic information resources, on the other hand, are those information resources in which access and use of them requires a student to have an electronic device, example, a computer, your handheld device, that is the handset. Examples of electronic information resources are those resources you find online, the web pages, the PDF files, the videos you watch on YouTube, all these which you listen to about recorded lectures are all examples of electronic device. Students are expected to make use of these two categories of information resources to achieve their information need within the system. Having understood this, it is important for students to realize that there is one particular place where you can find, be it an electronic information resources or the print resources in order to support your academic objective. It is referred to as the library. When I say the library, it is very important for we to correct the notion or the perception several persons have about the library. What is the library? A library are collections of books, manuscripts, journals, and other sources of recorded information. Going back into history, the word library comes from Liba, which is a Latin word book. A library, therefore, is an information environment that provides and enhances personal development and more so influences students' overall academic performance. Just like I stated earlier, it is very important for we to correct the notion or the myopic perception being held by different students 
about what exactly a library imply. A library is not just a storehouse of books. A library is different from a bookshop or a bookstore. This is because the information resources found in a library are usually organized. A library is a complete institution that selects, organize, preserve, store, and also disseminate information resources. A library, if you must know, is a social institution. When we say a social institution, if you remember back to your class in secondary school, you were made to know that human being by creation is a social animal. What makes a human being a social animal? Their ability to interact by virtue of instincts which make them higher than every other animal. Coming back to a library, we say a library is also a social institution because library provides you that social platform where you can easily come sit and interact with information resources. It is ordinarily believed that when you open a book, you could be reading a book and then smiling to yourself. And the next person sitting to you be wondering, what is wrong with him? Are you sure he hasn't run mental? No. That is because you are communicating with that particular information resources at that particular point in time. You could be reading a tragic novel and you find yourself probably shedding tears. And somebody passing to be wondering, what is wrong with you? Have you lost someone? No. You are communicating with the information resources and you are feeling the impact of the message being passed from that resources. So having understood this, it's also very important to also clear a different notion that when we talk about a library, a library doesn't necessarily refer to that building where books are being stopped. Library can be in your pockets, the library can be in your room, the library can be there for you on the go. The major business of a library is nothing but the management of information resources. Therefore, anywhere, in any form, information resources is being managed and made available to you. It can be referred to be as a library. From the comforts of your room or hostel, you make use of your phone to access information resources online. You are browsing through a library that has been arranged online. Through a library's web portal or available web address, you can also browse through the resources of a library to be able to access information resources easily without necessarily coming into the library. This can be done within any time, be it in the daytime or at night. This is because the library have advanced from what it used to be in line with technology. Libraries, like every other organization, have been designed to achieve a certain objectives. These objectives are there to guide libraries in the conduct of their affairs, and most importantly, to support libraries in satisfying the information need of the users. So like every other organization, libraries have their own certain objectives irrespective of the type of library, what functions they perform, how they go about their daily business, all libraries are expected to achieve the objective of the provision of information resources. And just like I earlier mentioned, information resources comes in two categories, the print and the non-print. Most libraries in recent time provide these categories of information resources in order to satisfy the need of their users. It's also important for you to know that the kind of resources a library provide are very much in line with the type of users that patronizes that library. As we shall be coming to see while discussing the different types of library, it's also very important for you to know at this point that each library have their own type of users. Number two among the objective of a library is the provision of information services. So aside from the provision of information resources, 
Libraries also provide certain types of information services in order to satisfy the information needs of users. Often at times, a new user walks into the library confused about where to go, what to do. The reference librarian will always be there to serve your need. In the comfort of your home, information has been selected and disseminated to you in line with your own kind of information need. We call this SDI, Selective Dissemination of Information. When new arrivals, new resources are available in the library, library uses all the available means to ensure that people are aware, awareness is being created about the existence of those new resources. All this is called current awareness services. There are several other services a library perform where a user is allowed to walk into the library using the circulation section to borrow an information resources, take it to their comfort in their home, their house, or read for a period of time, and then return the book to the library. All these and more are part of the several kind of services a library perform. Number three among the objectives of a library is the provision of conducive environment. As you will attest, virtually all the libraries provide at least tables, chairs, and a convenient environment where people can come to sit, read, and study. Convenient environments could mean a place strictly designated for people to come sit, consult the information resources in the library, and then go away. Conducive environments will also imply that a place designated where discussions, all forms of noise are taken away in order to allow the user to be able to concentrate and also derive more out of what they are reading or studying at every point in time. Have I understood this objective of a library? Just like the objective of libraries, libraries also have functions. Libraries based on their designs are established to perform certain functions irrespective of the type of library and the kind of users they serve. The functions of libraries run from identification and selections all the way to dissemination of information. Talking about identification and selections is a very important function among our libraries, which implies that libraries are expected to ensure they identify and select the type of information resources that are directly in line with the information needs of their users. For instance, an academic library have several faculties department within institutions of learning. And as a most, libraries are expected to select and develop information resources in order to satisfy the information needs of the student, staff, and researchers emanating from these faculties and department. Therefore, libraries must on a regular basis identify and select relevant, current, and useful information resources that will assist in achieving the objective of the users. So with so many information out there in the world, in various topics, libraries are expected to vet properly and ensure the information resources selected are directly in line with the need of the users of the library. Secondly, among the functions of the library is what we refer to as acquisition. After identification and selection of resources comes acquisition. This refers to the series of activities the library undertakes in order to make information resources readily available in the library. It also involves various available channels through which information resources are also brought into the library. Talking about the various available channels, library acquire information resources through several procedures. First and very importantly, library purchase information resources. So on a regular basis, budget consists of huge amount of money are usually allocated 
for the purchase of relevant and up-to-date information resources that will form a part of the library collection. Secondly, through exchange. This was formerly referred to as interlibrary. This is a form of agreement that allows a library across different areas, for instance, Barry University Library, Amadabella University Library, Fair University Dusama Library, and several others, to be able to access the content of one another. This was made possible as a result of the fact that resources have become so expensive and inadequacies of financial budget allocated to different library have also led to libraries going into such arrangement in order to what? share their information resources among themselves. Another process through which information resources are also being acquired into library is what is referred to as gift. Gift is a process that allows for individuals to gift information resources and other facilities to library for use by the users of the library. Even you, a student, you can give a library a gift of a book, a gift of a computer facility, a gift in any form, so long as it will be useful to the library. Other than gift, another process is what is known as donation. Donation, on the other hand, make it possible for corporate bodies, professional organizations, such as Nigerian Bar Association, Nigeria Library Association, non-governmental agencies, even international organizations such as UNESCO, Book Aid International, the British Council, they all donate information resources to libraries. Another way through which library acquire information resources is what is known as legal deposits. It's the process backed by law that stipulates that certain number of books are deposited in a library. It mandates all publishers and authors to ensure compliance or face penalty for not complying. So when you write a book, it will be expected that certain copies, numbers, are given to the library free of charge. And finally, among the process for acquiring information resources to the library is what is known as bequests. Bequests. This is a gift left to the library in an individual's will. When people come to write in their will, they include the library as part of the beneficiaries of their will. So over time, people are leaving a part of their estate or collections to ensure that it has been donated to the library when after they are long gone. Naming the library in the will gives the opportunity to make a lasting contribution to the library, be it small or intangible. It goes a long way in developing the library. In addition to the functions of the library is what is known as organization of information resources. Libraries must organize their information resources for ease of accessibility and use. Library resources are organized based on an accepted scheme for classifying and cataloging of materials. This gives a description of the library materials, whether print or non-print, which are kept in the shelf list and in the online public access catalog. A well-organized library collection provides easy access and retrieval of materials through what is known as classifying and cataloging. So why a library classification scheme is a system of knowledge organization by which a library resources are arranged systematically and in line with a particular classification scheme. The purpose of a catalog is nothing but to identify the book or the information resources using the bibliographic details. Another purpose of a catalog is to distinguish them from other information resources. Aside from this, the library also performed the function of storage and preservation. This is very important for the continuous use and survival of the resources. So libraries, as part of their functions, must ensure that all measures are put in place for the proper handling of information resources, both old and outdated. Provision should therefore be made 
or the preservation of information resources, be it in print form or electronic form. Talking about preservation, it is very important for the student to be aware at this point that when you walk into the library, you'll be faced with so many rules written on the door from the entrance all the way to the seats where you sit to consult the information resources. Rules ranging from do not eat, do not drink, do not chew, the do nots are so many. Why are these rules so important? Often at times, students walk into the library with biscuits and all the eatables hidden in their pocket for our women hidden in their hijabs. By doing this, you are inviting rodents and other insects into the library. When night comes and the bell is being rung for people to step out of the library, the rodents and insects as lower animals doesn't understand what it means to ring a bell. You simply step out of the library, but they remain. Later, the librarian comes and closes all the window. Sometime into the night, when the crumbs of biscuits and other things you left on the floor are eaten, they go hungry, and their next attention will go to the books, and they go about eating the books on the shelf. So when you don't desist from bringing chewables or eatables into the library, you are inviting rodents into the library. As part of preservation and storage measures, libraries also ensure that information resources are not mutilated. Mutilation arises from different processes, which are mostly caused by students or users of the library. While you come into the library to consult information resources, be very careful on how you handle the books. Some students, while going through a particular textbook, realize a particular page that carries so much information about an assignment. For selfish reasons, they may decide to tear that page and hide it away from other users. Without the knowledge of the librarian, they return the book. But what you fail to realize is for generations to come, your relatives, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins will come to the library. And by coincidence, they could be given the same assignment. And when they go to consult in that book, when they open to that page and they see the page is not there, they'll be forced to say nothing but a lie, sir. May God punish you. This is what a lot of them will say. And that will continue for a very long time. So to avoid falling a victim of this, we are appealing to you. Do not mutilate libraries information resources. And finally, among the functions performed by library is what is referred to as dissemination of information resources and services. Libraries make their services available because libraries are not just museums or storehouse of information resources. They are expected to disseminate their services to their numerous users through provision of easy access to these resources. In addition, libraries also inform, libraries also provide information services such as selective dissemination of information, current awareness services, whereby they try to make you aware of the new arrivals, new information resources that are available in the library. There's also circulation services, which allows you to borrow information resources out of the library. The reference services are also there, where you can go and ask information, ask questions and you'll be given answers. How do I consult my assignment? How do I structure my assignment? Which information resources can I best use for my assignment? Please guide me, where do I go? All these are reference questions, and the reference librarians will always be there to assist you. Library staffs are professionals, and they'll be very glad to assist in performing all these functions. Talking about the history of library, different perceptions have been held about the history of library. While some believe that a library is as old as man, other writers made an argument that the invention of writing and writing materials actually led to development of libraries. Talking about the writers that hold the first view, they are of the argument that the sole function of a library is simply that of information management and ensuring its availability for use when needed. By this, they imply that so long as what a library keeps is information, they made reference back to the past. At what time did man begin keeping information? And the simple answer to this is from the period man was created. Man began generating information and man began keeping information. 
the first means through which man generated information was through oral means. Man communicated among themselves orally, and this information had been stored in the brain. When references have been made, they consult the elderly within the family to tell them stories about the past. Those were the references, those were the sources, those were the information. So when people need to know more about their generation, need to know more about their society, since there was no book, there was no any means for documenting information as far as those periods were concerned, the only available means was to consult man. Man was the walking library. So hence they held the opinion that the creation of man matched the beginning of information and by extension, the generation storage and its subsequent dissemination, all these were done by man in the past. Before the coming of information resources upon which man began to manifest writing or document their activities. However, some others held the belief that the invention of writing materials gave birth to actual libraries. In the argument, they believed that the coming of writing materials, the books of the past, such as papyrus, those who wrote on clay tablets, those who wrote on the back of trees, others who wrote on parchment and volumes, all this gave library a meaning. These were people who referred to a library as a storehouse of information resources. So with the invention of a writing, originally by the Egyptians, during the Egyptian civilization, where they had the likes of hieroglyphics, and they began writing on papyrus, to the era of clay tablets, down to the period of the Roman civilization, and even the Greek civilization, they all made use of papyrus, the use of clay tablets, and the use of the different types of writing tools. So by virtue of this, this writers held the argument that the development of this writing materials upon which reference could be made even without man, people could go into a place to find what had been documented by man, could actually be marked at the beginning of library. In addition to our discussion into the history of libraries, From the period man was created, in the process where man developed a language of communication and upon which all the ideas of man were communicated from one generation to the other, through what was referred to as oral tradition, over time it was observed that due to the transitory nature of man, information by word of mouth communicated from one generation to the other could be distorted because man is forgetful in the event of an eventuality man passes away all information are lost by virtue of a natural disaster a complete community is wiped away all the information about the people their origin generation and their achievement are usually lost. It then occurred to man on the need to document his own activities beyond the human brain. On this basis, man developed several tools upon which the activities of man could be documented. Notable among them were writing materials such as stones, man wrote on stones in the past. Others wrote on the walls of cave. Several others wrote on the bark of trees. Later on across different civilizations. Vellum, parchment, clay tablets, and later papyrus were also developed and used by man across different civilization. Down to the period in AD 105, when paper was finally invented, 
in China. Information that were being shared among men was limited until the invention of paper. The coming of paper made it possible for information to be shared among people easily and cheaply. Knowledge and academic activities could be transferred from one person to the other with ease. The coming of paper was made prominent as a result of the invention of the movable type printing machine in the 1450s by Johannes Gutenberg and his associates with the invention of the jo with the Gutenberg printing machine it made it possible for information that were formerly wrote manually using hand to be printed on paper all in identical copies and several copies could be made within a short period of time. In the course of the civilization, several libraries were reported to have existed. The Alexandria Library is a famous library in Egypt. It contained probably the largest collection in the ancient world. Some reported it to be having over 400,000 items. Founded by King Ptolemy I before his death in 283 BC, his son Ptolemy II came over time and developed the library by expanding the library's collection. The texts in the library were transcribed onto one side of papyrus scrolls made out of an easily harvested and readily available reed from the Nile River. Ptolemy Sosa II expanded the building in which he housed his flourishing collections. Another important library is the Pagamum Library. This library was found by Atalus the Second, sorry, Atalus the First. It also became a great center of learning. Situated in the Western Asia Minor, the place now referred to as Turkey, many scholars came there to study and teach. And for hundreds of years, the only library that could rival the library in Alexandria, in size and scope of its collection, was the library of the Kingdom of Pagam. This library was recorded to be having approximately over 200,000 volumes in collection. It came to be known as one of the most important libraries in the ancient world and was second only to the Library of Alexandria. Although there were, however, claims that this library got burned, during a period of war by Julius Caesar of Rome, while others alleged that the content of the library was given to Cleopatra as a wedding present to add to the Alexander Library by Mark Antony, the then ruler of Macedonia. Another important library that existed in the ancient time were the Roman libraries. After the conquering of Macedonia, the present-day Greece, in 146 BC, the Roman Empire acquired a large collection of literatures from the Greek libraries. These literatures were scattered throughout the region. Roman officials often carried this literature back to their private homes as spoils of war. The Roman Empire grew in wealth and power and several Romans considered it fashionable to surround themselves with books 
as a mark of social distinction. It became highly fashionable to own a library. As a result, by 50 BC, many wealthy Roman families had developed extensive private library collections. Other than the Roman library, we also had Islamic libraries in the ancient time. The history of the libraries in the Islamic era was mostly attributed to the activity of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad This was in the 7th century. After his death, his followers transcribed his teaching into hadiths and a lot of them were recorded on papyrus codex that quickly became the scripture within the islamic religion believers were encouraged to read and commit substantial portion of the quran to the memory however in subsequent decades as armies of the successors conquered many territory, they took the religion of Islam and the commitment to literacy with them. They established libraries of sacred text, especially in mosques such as Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. Several rulers of the Islamic empire also had, as part of their own possession, private personal library collections. As time went by, other libraries were also discovered within the African continent, which could be referred to as Afri African libraries. These were libraries that later developed in the African continent by virtue of colonialism. All through the 20th century, Several foreign organizations were at the forefront of developing libraries and information centers in Africa. Notably among them were the British Council, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, and the later abolished United States Information Agency, now referred to as the U.S. Department for International Development, DFID. As a result of their activities, most African countries in the 50s and 60s had their libraries modeled onto those of France, Britain, and Portugal. Although development of libraries in Africa were done along regional lines, their contributions spread across different African countries such as South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Gabon, Sierra Leone, and the host of others. Talking about the libraries in Nigeria, the history of Nigerian libraries are traced to the activities of the British colonialists. As part of the activities within the Nigerian territory, they were forced to open agencies And as part of these agencies were attached libraries. Several schools also emanated as a result of the activities of the British missionaries, both primary and secondary schools. And at a later time, we also had high institutions of learning, which had academic libraries attached to them.